Rebel missions, and it's our new game mode in this expansion, and they offer you some pretty cool rewards for doing them, such as the new Reaper armor set, a Rebel Raven skin, some new tattoos, and the fancy Norman haircuts that look pretty slick at the time. Oh, also don't forget the new hybrid runes as well. So I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about this new game mechanic and share some of the best tips I've found for getting all of these items as quick as possible. So let's get going. So you've arrived in Frankia and you've shaken hands, shared pleasantries, and moved through a few cutscenes. Well, you may notice that Rebel missions actually become Become available for you to partake in at the rebel vendor and that person being Pierre at your home base in Melon. So doing these missions doesn't actually have any impact on the storyline. In fact you can do them all completely separately from it and collect all of the rewards from the shops before you even actually start any story arc. And speaking of rewards I think it's probably best we actually talk about them first so you kind of know what you can get before we actually go into the mechanics of it all. So first up by completing the rebel missions you're going to be able to pick up the reaper armor set in full and this is a stealth orientated armor set and I'd actually recommend recommend grabbing this set as one of the first things you do in the game as the black box stealth missions are actually integrated into the storyline which means once they're done they're done and an extra two seconds on that detection time which is the bonus you actually get from wearing the armor set is really handy in those scenarios we also pick up this nice golden rebel raven skin which goes well with the paladin armor set as well as the new haircut for Eivor the norman haircut which i use throughout my whole playthrough to be fair it's generally historically accurate which is what i like and then i mount up on my bear which is not historically accurate but there we go Anyway, back to some cosmetics, and we also pick up the Rebel Tattoo set, which, as you can see, is very B-orientated. In fact, this is the emblem for the Frankia Rebel Force, and actually has some significance throughout history. It's a symbol of immortality and resurrection, and it is, in fact, one of the oldest symbols of French royalty, an emblem Napoleon also personally adopted during his reign as emperor, which is pretty cool. We also pick up some brand new hybrid runes, and as far as I'm aware, this is the only place in the game where you can actually purchase runes with double stats. I didn't get any drops throughout my playthrough in Frankia, so we're kind of limited to these nine at the moment, but hopefully we see more going forward. Now, those are all the rewards, but to actually be able to purchase all of these things, we need to fulfill two requirements. First up, we need Denier, which is the cash we'll get from completing these rebel missions, and also we'll need the appropriate infamy reputation level. So if you've played the Wrath of Jury's expansion, then this is going to sound quite similar to the leveling system of that of trading missions, where we complete trading contracts, which then levels up Dublin, and then we can get our hands on some more rewards. And the same thing kind of applies here. Here, the more rebel missions we complete with the rebel force in Frankia, who are rebelling against Charles the Fat and his regime, the more our infamy and reputation grows amongst the people. So there's a total of four infamy levels, and every time you reach a new level, more rewards in the shop are going to become available to you. Of course, if you actually reach the max level infamy level of four, then all of the rewards will be available for purchase. Oh, by the way, folks, if you got any value out of the video so far or learn anything new, then a quick like on the video would be very kind and very helpful. So thanks very much. Now, what's cool about these rebel missions is there is actually Actually a bit of variety here. It's unlike daily missions because you can actually kind of choose what type of rebel mission you want to complete. So for example we can ambush a patrol or we can actually sneak into a camp for an item or go on a quest for a specific assassination target. Not only that but you can either choose to do these missions as part of a group with your rebels or you can actually choose to do these missions hand solo. So with this mechanic you can also choose to do nearby quests that actually don't take you too long to complete and are a little easier than the missions that are actually further away. These missions that are further away offer you harder enemies to fight against but they do reward you with more coins to spend in the store depending upon your performance. So for example if you do decide to take your rebel revolutionaries with you on a mission you can also choose whether they'll either be melee orientated so pitchforks in hand or you can choose them to actually be archers so standing back and offering volley after volley of arrows. Now I really like this addition of the expansion and it gave me some AC brotherhood vibes which was awesome but not only that with the cash you actually receive from completing these missions you'll also receive an extra 50 coins for keeping each individual you take in your party alive after the mission, which actually can result in a pretty big payday if you perform well. You can also use this cash to actually upgrade your rebel party instead of just buying rewards from the shop that we discussed earlier. This is a great mechanic in my opinion because you can actually see your rebels transforming from holding these pitchforks to being in full armor and holding onto a robust and well-made spear. So this also makes them harder to kill and more effective in rebel missions, which is a bonus because that means that they actually stay alive for longer and then you get a bigger payday because they haven't actually been one-shotted, which is a win-win all round. Now for me, it took me approximately 20 rebel missions to achieve the max level infamy of four. And that's when I had fully upgraded rebel archers and was also able to purchase the Reaper set for 2,050 denier. So to collect this cash or denier fast, I'd actually recommend 
recommend picking up the fast travel points sooner rather than later. And the reason for that being is there's actually several rebel agents dotted around Frankia, so you don't need to continually go back to Pierre to pick up missions and then hand them in. There's also some of them that are actually quite close to the synchronization points, so it's actually faster to travel back to them after finishing a mission instead of actually running all the way back across the countryside. Secondly, you can also read the mission text and you can actually see what kind of mission is up for grabs. So I found the patrol convoys to be the easiest and fastest to kill, mainly because when arriving, I could actually just drop a couple incendiary powder traps and the new Plague of Rats ability for some massive AoE damage. It's also considered a more difficult mission comparatively to the nearby missions, meaning bigger cash rewards. I also actually made sure to run with the Rebel Archers on a frequent basis because when I ran with the melee Rebels, they seemed to get cleaved instantaneously by the big boys. So having them placed on the edge of battle meant that they actually stayed alive a little bit longer and I picked up that bigger payday that we've discussed. I'd also simply accept the quest, fast travel to the patrol, AoE clear them, and then I would fast travel back in for the hand in. And there always seems to be a convoy patrol mission and I scooped up some serious cash very quickly just by doing that method over and over again. With all that being said, if you're actually looking to join a group of rebels, then come join our Discord community. We talk about everything AC and of course, everything not AC. So it would really be great to see you in the lobby. I've also got lots more guides and videos coming out about the Siege of Paris. In fact, by the time you watch this, there may be some out already. So if you'd like to actually see more, it may be worth clicking that notification bell so you can find your way back to the channel easily. But apart from that, folks, I think that'll do on this one. And as usual, coffee's on me.